Hello, welcome to an educational webinar on the U.S. labor market by Nalab, and this is presented by Capital Hungry Market Research Group. The labor market. The U.S. labor market is a vital component of the overall economy, and it is closely intertwined with monetary policy. Today, we will explore the, dyna the dynamic relationship between the U.S. labor market and monetary policy, emphasizing the key labor market indicators closely monitored by the Federal Reserve. Monetary policy and the labor market objectives. The Federal Reserve's primary objectives are to maintain price stability and achieve maximum employment. Monetary policy implemented by the Fed plays a significant role in influencing various aspects of the labor market. By adjusting interest rates and managing economic conditions, the Fed seeks to promote sustainable growth and a healthy labor market that will allow a disinflationary process in inflationary times. How tightening works in the labor market? First of all, the Fed tightens and the rates go up. This leads to higher borrowing costs, where since the Federal Reserve increases interest rates, it makes borrowing more expensive for businesses and individuals. Next is slower business investment. With higher borrowing costs, businesses become more cautious and may reduce their investment plans. This can lead to slower job creation and a re reduced demand for labor. Reduced job growth, slower businesses, so, slower business investments translate into fewer job op opportunities being created in the economy. Companies may become more hesitant to hire employees or expand their workforces, especially when there is dampened demand in the economy. With reduced demand for labor, employers may employers have less pressure to hop, offer higher wages. Wage growth may moderate or even decline as businesses seek to control costs in a tighter monetary policy environment. And this leads to a higher unemployment rate as job growth slows down, the unemployment rate may begin to rise. The number of unemployed individuals seeking employment may outnumber available job openings resulting in a higher unemployment rate. Last to feel the heat. The labor market is the last part of the economy to feel the effects of the rate hikes because of the following, long-term contracts between employers and employees, slower adjustments in hiring and firing decisions, time lags in economic responses, sticky wages, and the complexity of the labor market dynamics. On the left, we have a chart of initial jobless claims. And we can see that since the start of the rate hike cycle, it wasn't until September and start of 2023 where we started seeing jobless claims go up, right? So almost almost like eight months, 10 months into the year before we saw increases in jobless claims. Tight labor market. A tight labor market refers to a situation in which there is a low level of unemployment and a high demand for labor. Key characteristics and implications include low unemployment rate, increased wage pressures, elevated job openings, continuous job quits, low initial jobless claims, and strong numbers, strong job creation numbers. Meanwhile, a loose labor market refers to a situation in which there is a high level of unemployment and a surplus of available workers relative to the number of job openings. In a loose labor market, there is a lack of competition among employers for qualified workers, which can result in downward pressure on wages and limited bargaining power for job seekers. Key characteristics and implications include high unemployment rate, low wage pressures, reduced consumer spending, high initial jobless claims, and surplus of workers. Labor market indicators. The Fed carefully monitors several essential labor market indicators to assess its strength and inform policy decisions. These indicators offer valuable insight into employment trends, wage dynamics, and overall labor market condition. Such indicators include non-farm payroll, unemployment rate, initial jobless claims, ADP employment change, PMI employment index, wage growth, and jolts job openings and job quits. The icy hot economy. So the icy hot economy refers to two different parts of the economy, some with, that are cold, and this part includes things like retail, manufacturing, commodities, trucking, goods. These were the first 
uh, areas of the economy that felt the heat from the rate hikes. The hot part of the economy is where there is still lots of consumer spending, lots of business activity happening, and it remains sticky and hot, such as services, leisure, food, labor, construction, and housing. Hot to cold. To get stubborn inflation back down to 2%, the hot parts of the economy must make their way to the cold. The lagging rate hike effects will help that initiative, but it will also dig the dagger deeper for the sectors already in the cold category. So going back to this slide, in order to get services, dampen services, leisure, food, labor, construction, gonna ha the, the lag effects from the rate hikes, which are experienced like 18 months or 24 months is when we fully experience them. This will subdue, but it will also damage these sectors that are already more cold. Recent developments in the labor market. ADP employment chain. June ADP showed strong growth in the private sector, specifically in services sector, as this part of the economy remains hot. The services sector added 373,000 jobs, led by leisure and hospitality at 232,000. Education and health services were at 74,000, other services at 28,000, and construction at 97,000 jobs created in June. Services PMI Employment Index. The ISM Services Employment Index in the United States increased to 53.1 points in June from 49.2 points in May of 2023. An increase back into expansionary territory as consumers remain spending on services. Looking at PMI employment indexes can be a great look into other labor market data to see if we are in, especially in services or manufacturing, if we're going to see an increase in employment or a decrease, right? And this basically forecasted the change in services as part of the ADP employment report. Job openings. Job openings need to see continuous decreases to show a softer labor market. When job openings are high, workers have greater options available to them in the job market. We have seen jolts come back below 10 million in Q Q2, but has remained within the 9.5 to 10 million range, indicating a still tight labor market. Job quits. Recent job quits, jolts job quits showed that job quits over overcame the decreases since February and is now back above 4 million. Higher or increasing job quits indicates that workers are confident that they can get a better paying job in the market, which also forecasts strong, um, high worker confidence and a still tight labor market. Jobless claims. Jobless claims show, show increases uh, showed increase to above 260K in the past few weeks, but since then has come back into the range of 230 to 240K. If we don't see rising claims, it increases the probabilities of a second rate hike after July's hike to crack claims higher. And we can see we've ranged in there week over week, uh, pushed up above 260, but have fallen back down into this muted area. Wage growth. Average hourly earnings surpassed expectations and increased in year-over-year -year and month-over-month -month readings of June by 4.4 and 0.4% respectively. Increase in wages is a symptom of inflation. Wages increase with inflationary conditions so consumers can keep up with the price pressures. Increase in wages can also impact inflation due to increase in consumer spending power resulting in lingering aggregate demand. And here we can see... Um, compared to pre-pandemic, pre hourly wages are still trending higher. Unemployment rate. June's unemployment rate dropped down to 3.6% from 3.7%. The number of unemployed people decreased by 140,000 to 5.96 million. And the unemployment rate is still at historical lows, indicating a still tight labor market. So we can see we're still at historical lows. Non-farm payrolls. The June NFB showed 209K jobs created, but it was the first miss on expectations in 15 months. The payrolls give a sense of weakening, but the labor market still remains robust.
But the labor market remains hot, they said. In recessions of 1974 and 1980s, the non-farm payroll changes month over month, being a lagging indicator were showing strong positive numbers before the real impact of the economic contraction and recession hit the labor market. Historically, there has been very strong job numbers on the economy, uh, job numbers as the economy enters a period of recession. You can see 74 before we enter the late um, recession, 75, over here as well in 1980s, uh, early 1980s, and then 1982, we saw decreasing in job number, job creation. So what's next? In summary, the labor market is showing signs of weakening, but remains robust with historical low, uh, historically low unemployment rate, wage growth, low initial jobless claims, jolts job quits going up, and, jo and jolts job openings still remaining in the range of 9.5 to 10 million. While the effects of the rate hikes on the labor market may not be immediate, they eventually influence job growth, wages, and overall employment levels. Higher borrowing costs and a more cautious business environment can slow down job creation and moderate wage growth. However, the timing and magnitude of these effects can vary depending on economic conditions and other factors at play. As the Federal Reserve navigates its rate hike cycle, it aims to strike a balance between maintaining price stability and achieving maximum employment. Currently, the sentiment remains that the Fed may be able to nail the soft landing as we have seen disinflation while the labor market remains robust and tight. As we head into the second half of 2023, the lag effects will continue and it will be important to see how the labor market has impacted around the, 20, around the 18 to 24 month mark since the start of the rate hike cycle. Thanks everybody for watching this short webinar on the US labor market and its implications with monetary policy. Enjoy.